I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, student research opportunities at SANSA, the South African National Space Agency. So I'm uh, Dr. Martin Snow. I'm the research chair in space weather, uh, and uh, and my partner Michel Anton. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, um, uh, the details of, of how you how you can come to to SANSA. So. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, the SANSA uh, there at the end of the rainbow uh, was created in 2010 to pr promote the use of space and foster international collaborations. Uh, as you can tell by my accent, uh, I perhaps am one of those international collaborations. Uh, so the, the other goals are, of course, to advance space science and engineering and to build human capital uh, by training future scientists. That's you, right? So uh, we are in Hermanas, uh, which is a very nice place. Uh, hopefully uh, people will get to visit. So, uh, so what do we study there? So um, there's a big list here, uh, space science, of course, uh, space weather, which you may or may not know about. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about that shortly. Uh, solar physics, which is uh, my area of expertise. Uh, plasma physics, of course. Uh, then, you know, a variety of engineering, um, satellite systems engineering, um, and mechatronics. I've never really heard of that word before, but it's pretty cool. It's like robotics. Uh, electronics, of course. And then uh, several branches of mathematics, computer science, machine learning. Don't teach the machines too much. Uh, data science uh, and earth system science. So we cover quite a, quite a, a large ground. Uh, there's our, the URL for our webpage if you'd like to go visit. Uh, so uh, so what, uh, what, are we, what are we studying, right? So the, you see a picture of the sun there, and uh, you know, it's not just a plain old uh, ball of, of hot gas. Uh, it's got a lot of stuff going on because it's got a magnetic field as well. So it is the source of, of all the, uh, the energy in the heliosphere, uh, and eruptions on the sun uh, can cause geomagnetic storms on Earth. And basically all of modern technology is vulnerable to space weather events. Uh, so here's, here's a kind of an amusing little chart of some of the, the effects of space weather, right? So you get stuff from the sun up in the, the upper right there, uh, can affect spacecraft, uh, their electronics. If there are people out in space, uh, they have to be worried about uh, radiation hazards from uh, energetic particles. Uh, of course, the other big area is uh, radio communication with airplanes uh, and satellites. Um, those signals have to pass through the atmosphere and the upper layers of the Earth's atmosphere are ionized. Uh, so the electrons have been stripped off the, the atoms and we bounce radio signals off there. So talking to aircraft, uh, we, we try and bounce signals off the ionosphere all the time. And uh, if there's been a solar storm that has disrupted that, uh, that can, can cause problems. Um, another big thing is uh, the um, ejections from the sun can compress the Earth's magnetic field. And those of you who, who took in uh, electronics and, and electricity and magnetism class know that a changing electric field produces uh, a magnetic field and a changing magnetic field produces an electric field. So when the Earth's magnetic field is changed, it can produce electric currents in the ground. And we have conveniently put these conductors all over the ground. We call it the, the, the power grid. Uh, so uh, ESCOM uh, has provided these uh, uh, big conductors that can, can have huge increases in, in power. Uh, and we, uh, we need to alert the, the uh, power companies so that uh, they don't overload their, their system. Another uh, aspect that we always use, of course, is GPS, right? Everyone has a phone in their hand and uh, that talks to satellites and so on. When the ionosphere is disturbed, those signals get, get uh, garbled a bit. And uh, so one of the, the things that can happen are, are, of course, errors in navigation. Uh, I love this chart because it shows uh, here in the middle that the navigational error uh, uh, goes to a train and uh, trains don't really navigate. Uh, so, but another case of something that does navigate is say a mountain uh, snowplow uh, on a narrow road. If they are, there's a, a 
storm and they can't see, they're going to rely on their GPS for positioning. If that snowplow is off by a few meters, that might be a problem. If the airplane that's also using GPS is off by a few meters too high or too low when it's trying to land, that could be a big problem. Other aspects uh, of our modern society are um, things like uh, construction equipment, right? You may have seen uh, these, uh, these antennas on, uh, on road, road machines. Uh, they are GPS locators to guide the, the, the construction. And uh, here's kind of a, a fancy, you know, you could have a straight road. Uh, if you then add in a little disruption from the sun, uh, maybe your road's not so straight. You know, that probably doesn't happen too often. Uh, but another aspect uh, that is becoming more common is precision location services uh, for farming, right? That you want to have the, the, the crop rows straight. You want to um, ideally, you know, only irrigate where there are crops, only fertilize where there are crops uh, and not in between the rows. So you want everything to be nicely nicely kept uh, tidy, uh, but of course you put in a solar storm and then maybe, uh, maybe your farmland isn't quite so straight. Uh, okay, so uh, what causes all those, uh, those things? Uh, sometimes the, the sun uh, has these eruptions. So we've got a, a movie uh, of a solar flare. Uh, it was difficult to time the cat sneeze to just when the flare happens. So uh, please bear with me. Uh, anyway, so there are these eruptions, flares, uh, with uh, that can often um, shoot material out into space uh, from the outer part of the sun, which is called the corona. So uh, the uh, astronomers are, are very clever. So ejected material from, from the corona is a coronal mass ejection. Um, the sun also changes on long time scales, right? So here is the last uh, couple hundred years of these uh, uh, active regions on the sun blemishes. Um, so you know, the sunspots, they uh, appear at high latitudes on the sun, evolve and start appearing closer to the equator. Uh, this diagram uh, is uh, uh, figuratively known as uh, the butterfly diagram. I think you can, you can figure out why. Uh, so understanding why the sun goes through these cycles uh, and then what their effect is on society. That's, that's kind of the basics of, uh, of what we do uh, at SANSA. So, and I'll just highlight a couple of projects uh, that um, we're advertising, looking for, for students who are interested in, in working on them. Uh, one is, you know, how active could the sun be? Uh, we have, you know, hyperspectral images of the sun that uh, show, you know, this type of region, uh, is very active, this part is less active. So, you know, what would happen if we added together all of, all of the sun as active regions? You gotta take account of the three dimensional thing, right? The sun is a sphere, not just a circle uh, and so on. So it's, it's, it's not a, uh, an impossible task, uh, but definitely one that, uh, that a student would learn a lot about how to analyze data and, uh, and also how about the sun. Uh, another aspect of the sun is, uh, you know, does its, does its um, size change over the solar cycle and over years and so on, right? That tells you more about the inside of the sun that you can't see as well. So another idea is uh, to use um, this huge amount of data that has sitting somewhere uh, that uh, has been collected over the last few decades, but hasn't really been analyzed yet. So using satellites uh, and so positioning all of the, the, the pieces, uh, where's the sun, where's the satellite, where's the moon and so on. We could perhaps make a very precise measurement of the diameter of the sun uh, over, over long time periods. So that's another idea for a project. Those are not the only projects. If you go to the webpage, you'll see dozens of projects from uh, either me or from other researchers at SANSA. And uh, we, we're recruiting students to, to come work on these. And uh, uh, the next part of the talk here, we'll talk about the details of how you actually uh, might, might apply for one of those. So I will hand over the microphone 
to your show. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Loud and clear, you shall. <laughs> Students, before I presentation, I just want to um, link up to some of what Dr. Snow said at the end. So um, we are not a degree granting institution. So you need to be registered at any of the South African um, universities. You may have your own university supervisor. You don't need to be supervised by a SANSA researcher. <clears throat> if you do decide to take a, a research topic, that is one of our researchers, you're more than welcome to do that. We also have a number of masters and PhD students that live on site in Hermanus. Um, that is part of the space with weather and physics team. Some of our supervisors also co-supervise honors projects. So you're more than welcome to send me an email if you want more information. Next sl a slide, please, Dr. Snow. So um, we are funded through the DSI and NRF. So it's the Department of Science and Innovation and the National Research Foundation. Um, say for the last six years or so, we've been, we funded about 284 postgraduate bursars within the science, technology, engineering, and mathematic fields. Does um, include your computer science, information systems, um, and such. We attend university career fairs and also just normal university visits to visit our students. Um, with COVID, we've gone, like you know, virtual. Um, our researchers pre do presentations at the university. Some of them offer lectures because they are um, honorary um, personnel of the university. So we also have summer schools and winter schools. We collaborate with international space agencies and universities to host these schools. We normally have a NASP summer school and then international space weather camp. We also have a two yearly science student workshop. We are planning to have a virtual one this year. We offer vacation work. That is if you come with a letter from your, your university to say that it's mandatory for you to do some vacation work. We look at it and then we see if we have the capacity to assist you. So, like I said in the beginning, you may attend any of our national universities. There's collaboration between SANSA and the universities. You can find our, our, our projects on the research portal that I posted in the chat. We normally have students visiting our facility as well. So if you're on a student that's been supervised or co-supervised by a SANSA researcher, in the past, they will come for two weeks or a month to spend some time we have student accommodation um, on site. So who do we fund? So at the moment, we only fund postgraduate studies. Um, we do not just fund masters in coursework. You must also have a project linked to your coursework. I've mentioned this, the, the honors projects, summer schools. We also have engineering students that sometimes go to our uh, to be a Zook facility. Sorry, I have a little co-presenter. Um, we also have interns and volunteers on site. They normally apply directly through the National Research Foundation or through SANSA. Um, and if you go through in a, if you can be placed with any of our sister entities. So I'd, I advise you to um, apply for their internships as well as ours. Next, please. Yeah, everything is in a nutshell. Um, you may email the grants at sansa.org.za if you have any, any application queries or you can use the students at sansa.org email address that I gave you. I manage both of them. So everything will come directly to me. 